is the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1 getting better dynamic range and a faster focusing system? Today's patent filing says yes. The patent expands dynamic range while also improving focusing performance. Want to know more? Then stick around after this short break for all the details. But first, subscribe to this channel for a chance to win a Canon EOS R5. I'll be giving one away to one lucky subscriber once this channel reaches 100,000 subscribers. Anyone above the age of 18 with a valid mailing address is eligible. Additional terms and conditions are linked in the description down below. Either the Camera Insider is based out of Asia or, well, they're a bit of a night owl because this came out around midnight Eastern Standard Time about a Canon patent filing. JP 2023-138-838 Alpha was originally filed February 2019, but was recently refiled in August of 2022 and was published today, October the 2nd, 2023. According to the filing, the patent application uses multiple processing units to expand the dynamic range while also improving focus performance. And this is one of those, well, rather technical filings talking about many different processing units from a scanning unit to an amplification unit, a processing unit, focusing unit, and I think a few others as well. It's very technical and there's an awful lot of drawings. I think there's some 18 technical drawings or blueprints talking about how Canon's gonna go about improving dynamic range as well as the performance of the focusing unit. And while this patent was filed originally back in 2019, it was refiled last year in August of 2022. So we don't really know what kind of updates were provided at that point, but it was just recently published today, providing us with improved dynamic range, a faster focusing system. And it's not really surprising that we could expect to see this in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, as well as the Canon EOS R1. Those cameras have been in development for some time, going back past August of 2022. It, it really isn't surprising at all when you think about it to have improved dynamic range in the successor to the Canon EOS R5 as well as the Canon EOS R1. Well, the Canon EOS R1 successor is the 1DX Mark III and obviously we're gonna have improved dynamic range. Now the question is, and this is a big deal, are we gonna have maybe a half a stop improvement to the point where most people aren't gonna notice the difference? Or is it gonna be several stops where we have a huge improvement? Now, I would really love to see something like 20 stops of dynamic range, but that's just not going to happen. And despite having rumors about 20 stops of dynamic range coming to some future cinema cameras, I can't see that in a stills hybrid camera like the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or even the Canon EOS R1. But bumping it up a couple of spots, spots, <laughs> bumping it up a couple of stops, that's certainly something plausible and it's definitely expected to improve it at least one stop maybe two, for a camera that's well, came out four years ago and for the Canon EOS R1, which let's face it, all the, the buildup to this camera is saying it's supposed to be the master of everything. Well, the master of everything with just a half a stop or a stop improvement, I don't buy it. I do expect it to have a much better focusing system, a faster focusing system, and maybe, just maybe, even quad pixel autofocus. And while this patent application does talk about the faster focusing system be based off of or to work with dual pixel autofocus, we do have patent filings for a quad pixel autofocus system for Canon. And this was a big deal several years ago when we started getting rumors about the Canon EOS R1. But now, well, we do have cameras on the market with a quad pixel autofocus system. So not really surprising but Canon does have one of the best autofocusing systems out there tied with Sony. So to be able to improve the autofocusing system is one thing, to make it faster is another. And I would really like to see the improvement, not just to how fast it is and how well it performs, whether it's quad pixel versus dual pixel, but also to be able to improve, well, the autofocus system in terms of our workflow and how we think and how our minds work, to be able to take some artificial intelligence machine learning to even just subject detection or to be able to, well, expose based on the autofocus point on the eye, I think that would go a long way. And Sony already does this with their cameras and Canon doesn't, so that's certainly an improvement that we could see. So a faster autofocusing system, that's great. Um, sure, it makes sense with faster processors, image processors, image sensors, and other units in the camera. Yeah, very plausible, I, I kind of expect it. So. Improved dynamic range, faster focusing system, sounds great, we expect it. But it really leads us to wonder, 
what the Canon EOS R5 and Canon EOS R1 are going to be. Well, the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, we already know about the Canon EOS R5 Mark I. Uh, I'm, I'm getting a little bit, I'm, I'm, I don't know about you, but I, every bit of news, every bit of tease that we get for the Canon EOS R5 Mark II or the Canon EOS R1 gets me up early, gets me thinking about what these cameras could be, gets me dreaming about what we could see in these two cameras. And the rumors, well, they've been all over the place. Even the Canon EOS R5 Mark II, which is expected to be announced sometime around CP Plus in mid-February of 2024, well, we can't even get a confirmation on the sensor resolution. 60 megapixels, then 61 megapixels, now 62 megapixels. It's all over the place and coming from multiple sources, Canon Rumors and the Camera Insider. One thing I do expect though, and one thing that is almost a given is that it's going to have a stacked sensor, whether it's 45, 50 megapixels, 60 plus or something else, I definitely expect it to have a stacked sensor. The Nikon Z8 has a stacked sensor and it's becoming kind of a thing, especially at a $4,000 price point. Hopefully, hopefully the Canon EOS R5 Mark II is not just a minor update and getting a stacked sensor to me would be a rather big improvement in many different areas and including improving low light performance and dynamic range. What do you want to see in the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1? And most importantly, what would it take to get you to upgrade from your current camera to one of these two cameras? And which camera do you currently have that is your daily driver that you're looking at upgrading? Is it the R3, the 1DX Mark III, the 1DX Mark II? The 5D Mark IV, I was out at a recent um, fire hall exhibition just a couple of weeks ago, and I bumped into a gentleman who was shooting with a 5D Mark IV with a 15 to 35 millimeter. Yeah, he loves the results of it, and it still keeps producing. Although the one area that I think he would be greatly excited by in these new cameras is, of course, the focus, not the focusing system. I mean, see, even I've gotten caught up with talking about focusing systems. Today's modern focusing systems, they're incredible. The ability to track not only the human eye in human eye detection, but also eye-controlled autofocus. To be able to track animals, birds, and to be able to track motorsports, people wearing helmets on bikes and cars. It's just truly incredible what autofocus systems can do today but to be also able to track that person, whether they're driving a car, a motorcycle, or anything else. And even if they go behind something big like a barn or a truck or another car and still to maintain focus on that subject, to be able to maintain focus on that subject, I think is a really big deal. And that's something I would like to see. We see it in some video cameras. Why can't we see it in cameras like the Canon EOS R5 Mark II and the Canon EOS R1? I would also see, like to see parfocal lenses built for these cameras, some affordable parfocal lenses. And if you're not a video shooter, well, then I understand why. It's the ability to be able to change your zoom without being able to change your focus or without needing to change your focus. That's a really big deal. And we see that in television and movie cameras, and that's what parfocal lenses are about. But to improve the ISO, low light performance, dynamic range, to be able to get dual CF Express Type B card slots, I hope that's some of the feedback that people got, well, that Canon got from people with a Canon EOS R3. A $6,000 camera with dual card slots and one of them being an SD card slot? Come on. If anyone thinks that makes sense, I don't even think Canon does. I'm, I'm, I'm sure the person who made the decision to put it in there was bean counting. It was done by committee, but all the engineers are saying, no, you can't do this. Go with dual CF Express. It's the future. It's the way to do things. You can't do that in a you can't put in an SD card and a CF Express card in a $6,000 camera? What were they thinking? Anyhow, let me know what you think in the comment section down below. And if you want to stay up to date on the latest camera gear news and rumors, then go ahead and subscribe, but also choose all notifications. And for all, well, those minor news and rumors, all those stories that aren't quite big enough to have their own separate video, well then go ahead and follow me on X, formerly known as Twitter, and to give you a good reason why, this video is coming out now, what, around 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time? But you see, I noticed this late last night, shortly after the Camera Insider had published this story. So I'm constantly tweeting out information that isn't quite big enough to have its own separate video, but also, well, well in advance of any sort of video. So follow me on Twitter because there's no penalization for publishing, you know, 10, 12, well, however many tweets a day I want unlike YouTube where that's it at three. 
So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. And if you really like supporting this channel, if you're interested in supporting this channel and it doesn't cost you anything, and you're looking at buying gear, then consider purchasing camera gear using my affiliate links at BH, Adorama, or Amazon.com using these links down below. But that's it for now. Thank you so much for tuning in. Have yourself a great week, and we'll see you again soon.